back to the Plant Life Podcast. My name is Dana, and thanks for joining us on today's podcast. Um, so today we are here with our resident elder, Patty <laughs> Talby. Um, Ancient elder. <laughs> she's been with us for quite some time. How long have you been here? Uh, 17 years. That is a long time. Mm-hmm. It is. And I feel ancient, <laughs> today especially. It's cloudy and gray out. <laughs> um, so today we're going to be talking about um, natural then versus natural now. So we want to talk specifically about the natural movement, kind of when it started. Um, I'm more of a millennial, so I don't know much about it, but... I believe it got started in the 60s, so um, where were you at in the 60s? What was your lifestyle like? Were you a hippie or what? Mm -hmm. It's always fun to talk about history. So um, I grew up, I was born in the early 50s, and uh, um, so I came into my prime in the 60s, and I lived in San Clemente, and uh, San Clemente is very close to Laguna Beach, and Laguna Beach was one of the kind of the main capital capitals of uh, hippies. And at that time, and it was a really cool vibe going on. It was um, laid back. Hippies were not really into money or into clothes or into a lot of the things that um, kids are today. They were just more um, freedom. I think was probably one of the things that that kind of resonated with everybody, free from clothes, free from pressure, free from everything. So it was, um, there was a lot of uh, political activity at the time, but it was a really, really, really fun time down here in San Clemente, um, just due to the, the cool factor that, you know, free love, everybody was into you know, brother and sister and, and all these things. Um, how true all that was, uh, not not necessarily so true, but um, it was a great time to live. And so, yes, I was very much a hippie. <laughs> long um, hair and everything? I had super long hair all the way down past my butt. And um, I didn't shave my legs or my underarms. I didn't really bathe that often. I had so definitely um, a natural lifestyle. <laughs> very natural. Did Absolutely. you eat natural? Yeah, I actually became a vegan when I was 14 years old. Um, oh. I had been raised on hot dogs and beans and hamburgers and all those foods. Great but, American um, foods. Yeah, totally American foods and. Um, but when I was uh, 14, I, my body just, I just didn't like them anymore and I didn't want to eat them. And I think part of the reason was, is I was doing a lot of drugs. I started doing drugs when I was uh, about uh, 11 years old, um, smoking a lot of pot and, and doing that. And, and my body just started not wanting to eat things that had a lot of junk in them. And so I went vegan and there was one tiny little health food store here in San Clemente um, that um, had natural products in it. So we'd always go over there for a, a juice, a carrot juice, or a, a carrot and celery juice, or whatever. And Laguna Beach had some really cool little, um, small, tiny little shops that served, you know, avocado sandwiches and whole wheat bread and. And it was a very, um, not a lot, not popular like it is today, but it was, it was definitely around. And uh, as, uh, so I went vegan. And uh, in that vegan time period, uh, there wasn't a lot of knowledge level about what to eat, what not to eat, proteins, you know, vitamins, minerals, all that stuff that there is today. Uh, the science wasn't quite there, or I was too young to know about it. And of course, there wasn't Google. Um, but, no internet uh, back then. <laughs> yeah, no internet, no cell phones. But um, we had this one little health food store that I was mentioning here in San Clemente um, who had um, a gentleman that ran it that was extremely knowledgeable. And a lot of the, um, the items on the market, there weren't very many. Um, a lot of them came from local farms. A lot of them came from like a, a company called Altadena, which is a very large producer. They did raw milk and raw cheeses and, 
and uh, they don't do that anymore, but they did back then. And, and so there was a lot of great food available, and there are a lot of great supplements, but not the quantity, and they were much higher quality than they are now. And um, so um, I had gotten into eating all this really, you know, good food, super good food, like salads and lentils and, you know, various, uh, um, you know, beans and, and vegetables and different things, but my body stopped being able to digest food. And so I ended up um, going to visit my little guy at the health food store, and he's put me on Bragg's apple cider vinegar, a tablespoon with each meal to help me digest food. And, and so it was that type of thing that was going on back then. And it, I, I would say that things were much more natural back in that day than they are today, even with the natural and organic industry. There's a lot more commercial today than there was then. Um, at that time, there were just small little companies like Bragg's was a you know, small company. Uh, but had a lot of great products. Dr. Bronner's, of course, was around um, when um, Dr. Bronner was actually alive and, and with us, who made the best chips and corn chips in the world. And uh, I did ask the grandsons when they took over the company if they're going to bring that product back out to market. No and plans? No plans. <laughs> they said it wasn't necessarily the best food for you, but mm. man, those, those corn chips were the best. So it's surprising to hear that there was only one store who had natural products available just because here in Southern California today, there's so many stores with health food products. It's just readily available. So, um, so you would say that natural products weren't available back then like they are today. You know, the difference in life today than what it was back then is that the food quality today is much more compromised with all the GMO stuff and, and all the preservatives and processed foods that there are. Back then, things were a more simpler time period, um, even in what food you could buy. Um, there weren't a lot of restaurants. Um, there weren't, you know, there were restaurants around, but uh, people didn't eat out as much. They ate more whole foods. What so, about in terms of like body care though? Body care was a little bit different. They didn't have a lot of body care. I, th I think the only thing that I remember using was I used Dr. Bronner's peppermint soap and I used it to wash my hair, to brush my teeth, to wash my body. I used it for everything. And um, I, it, it, was, it was kind of a, just a overall all-in-one type thing. And uh, so we didn't use a lot of lotions, but um, when I got pregnant years later, um, again, I was 14 when I, when I got, really got into natural, um, when I had my children, I went back to that, when I was pregnant, I went back to that same health food store and said, what do I do for stretch marks? And they gave me a pure vitamin E. And so, but there wasn't a lot of body care. There wasn't a lot of um, skin care or hair care or, or really anything um, except for maybe if a local made it or, um, and I don't even remember brands other than like Dr. Bronner's and Bragg's and, you know, some of the, uh, Ezekiel, um, so. So do you feel like the natural movement started back then or did it start earlier or do you feel like it's more prevalent now? So I think what has happened in the natural industry is that it's commercialized. Now. Now. So, you know, basically, um, I think life was much more natural all the way up until now, and now it's become a commercial commodity where people make money off of it. Um, and I don't think the products um, are near as good as what they used to be when things were made where the ingredients were coming more from local sources, the ingredients, you know, honey is an example. Honey used to be plentiful and it was really good honey. Um, I used to shop at Laguna Beach Co-op and um, used to, you know, pull my honey out of big cans where the bees would come out with it and, and it was just the oils, everything was much cleaner, um, much more um, a better quality, whereas now because it's so commercialized, um, 
you know, they put the name natural or the name organic into a title and, you know, it's a little bit of uh, the quality isn't near as good as what it used to be. So I think, you know, to answer your question, I kind of said a lot there, but um, I think it's progressed where people have seen the, the benefit of eating a natural or living a natural lifestyle. Um, people have really gotten into working out um, and all of that, which kind of falls into it. Whereas prior, in, when back in the hippie days, people really didn't care about that. They, it, it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't. Were they kind of more just culturally natural versus like now it's like a lifestyle choice to be natural? Yeah. So I, there like wasn't an option back then to be any other way except for yeah natural yeah there wasn't okay. the it, it exactly it wasn't like now you know like uh you could be a bodybuilder you could do mma or you can you know there was just so many ch there he, now there's so many channels and it's a lifestyle of what channel you really want to live but back in those days again life was so simple and it was um you know we were going at a time in the 60s from you know um, the Vietnam War and, and, and there's been lots talked about that but there was a change in culture and the culture was um, much more Aussie and Harriet very family oriented and and uh, you know people had meals together every day um, sometimes all uh, two meals at least a day and now we're all so busy we can't even find time to get together as a family you know it's just it's completely different lifetime and um, so the I think that back then the hippie movement was people rebelling against society as a whole to say we don't want what you guys are offering we want to do our own deal and our own deal was you know peace and doing drugs and living the way we wanted to live and and in some cases you know I watched as that generation of people evolved in um, where we all are today a lot of them turned to yuppies <laughs> you know where they realize hey we need money to live and we gotta you know we gotta go after that a lot of the people I knew ended up dying with from drug addiction and and all sorts of terrible things that happened during that time period I saw a lot of people become activists and political um, uh, you know, you think today is bad, but back then was just as bad. I mean, there was riots, and when I was in high school, we would get locked into our high school um, with cops patrolling on the outside because of the gang wars. And it was just a different, it was a different war that was going on and a different political climate compared to what it is now, but it wasn't necessarily worse now or, or then. It was just where society was going as a whole. Do you see uh, like a similar movement going on today with like the rise against GMOs and like people choosing more natural foods over processed foods and the demand for that being higher? Like is that sort of, is? do you feel like that's a similar movement today as it was back then? I think that the awareness level that people have today in um, making their choices and how they live their life in their food or their medicine, you know, Western medicine versus Eastern medicine or what, you know, or um, homeopathic. Or, right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, people are much more aware because we have, it, back then it was more, and it was just, this is just my opinion, obviously. But back then, it was more geared toward social changes, mm. um, not necessarily lifestyle changes. Today, it's much more geared toward um, choosing the lifestyle that you want for your family. So if you you know, want to live more of a natural lifestyle and eat foods and, and exercise and do the things that, that we've known through education, um, uh, I'm in a rabbit trail here for a minute. One of the coolest things that I and I say this to many many people through the years is the fact that back in the days one of our our key scenes as hippies were you are what you eat and I never realized how true that was until probably 20 years ago 
and um, the you know with the diets that we all have in in America um, with the processed foods and now all the GMO stuff and and just all the the lack of good minerals and, and um, nutrients in our food and supply added chain. chemicals. Yeah, and all that stuff added. Preservatives. Mm -hmm. um, it has really made us more sicker as a, as a nation in America. And so we've all had to look for ways to live a, a better lifestyle and make the right choices excuse me, for our families. And um, I mean, vaccinations, we never had to think about that back in those days because, you know, an MMR was an MMR. Now they add all these other things into, the, into it that no longer is it just an MMR. It has a, a bunch of other things that has caused a lot of issues. So it, it's much more complex now than yeah. what it used to be. Um, and I think that's really the big difference. And as I'm talking about this and kind of remembering back and thinking about how um, life is now, I, I think it's gotten much more complex, much more detrimental to, um, to enjoying life because our, supply, our food supply chain is, is not good like it used to be. Our water, it's, you know, all of it, it, it our air quality, everything is just um, degraded. And so it's a... It, I feel like it's gotten a lot more complex, too, because of the overwhelming amount of information we now have, which is good and bad, because we have an overwhelming amount of natural information, learning how to be vegan or vegetarian or living a natural lifestyle, but then it's also... Like, who knows what's real, what's not real. Like, it's That's hard to a determine. That's a really good point. That is so true. Because uh, you think about um, how you didn't much have marketing. That no, yeah. we didn't have the internet. We had no false marketing. You just had and, that one guy at that one store. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There used to be, on TV, so this is, again, when there was very few ads on TV, and the TV programming was very simple, um, but you couldn't say anything on TV unless it was 100% accurate. And the government ensured that accuracy. That was one of their jobs. And um, when marketing kind of took over and people started realizing how much money they could be making off of, you know, us, it just went rampant. And there's so much fake marketing. Um, it is unbelievable. Um, there's even the information who knows if it's real or not yeah even the scientific results because these scientific results are all based on findings to help generate more revenue to for the next scientific study yeah it's important to know who's funding that scientific research that's and yes pay attention to those details instead of just the results um, but do you think people would like plant life products back in the 60s? Like, do you oh, think yeah. they were missing out yes. on having natural products? Totally. And I'm not biased just because I work here. But um, no, plant life products are... Um, the cool thing about plant life is it's it started back in 94. And plant life as a company has stayed very true to using, you know, really whole wholesome ingredients in their products. Um, people can tell the difference. You know, there's a lot of great products on the market, but a lot of products are made with fragrance oils or they'll use one synthetic or something that, you know, isn't as good, but the overall product's pr fairly clean. Or there's hidden chemicals like phthalates in fragrance oils, and all you see on the label is fragrance. You don't know that's a hidden chemical. Exactly. Yeah. And that hid hidden chemical causes cancer and all sorts of other things. So, yeah. And I think that, you know, back in those days, people, you know, loved that raw, yes. the raw factor. Everything was raw. We, there wasn't anything. We, we ate more raw food than ever. <laughs> I mean, it was just raw, raw whatever it was. We loved it, and we ate it. Yeah. And, um, you know, so plant life from that raw factor. Um, and kind of that handmade factor, too. Yeah. Yeah. They would love them. That's cool. Um, so we talked a little bit about the different products 
to what you had back then and today, but what, what do you think like is one of the main differences between products back then and products now? That's a, you're asking great questions here. So I think the biggest difference is that the products back then, again, were made from very a good supply chain of raw ingredient. So the products were more wholesome. Like I remember buying um, these uh, date things that we that were made with dates and coconuts and nuts. And somebody made them in Laguna Beach and sold them locally here, and, and we all just would eat them like crazy. And um, I, I also was a, a huge cook, so I made a lot. I made my own yogurts, I made my own breads, I sprouted my own sprouts. I, I did I did all of that um, natural living in as I aged. That's a lot so, of work. No one has time for that today. <laughs> it, but it's funny. I never even, you know, I, I just never just thought of, of it. It was just part of life. And, and um, you know, it was, it didn't take that long to throw some seeds in a sprout container and have them sprout and use that for my <clears throat> sandwiches or whatever. And uh, so going back to your question, though, the those ingredients were much better and the products were simpler and they didn't have to have a shelf life. And when things started going very commercial as to where they are right now, that shelf life has imposed a lot of constraints on the products um, because they've had to put preservatives in them. They've had to put they've had to put shelf stabilizers in in their ingredient or in their uh, um, formulas to ensure that that product lasts for a long time. That's very interesting. Very true because we're. Companies aren't just local anymore, they're across the U.S. or across the world, so they needed them to last longer. So that makes sense. Yeah, and even with large distribution centers where, you know, all these manufacturers are shipping their product into distribution centers, and that food may, or that product may sit in that distribution center for a long time before it gets sold and then it could just sit on the shelf for a long time. So back in those days the bread would go bad within, you know, like a week. And like even when you buy organic, you know, true organic product, not organic that lasts forever. I mean I, I bought organic at Costco apples and those apples were in the refrigerator three months and they still weren't bad. I wouldn't eat them, but it's like how can an organic apple lasts that long and I think a lot of the food's been modified um, to last longer and they can still use an organic claim um, on that um, because possibly it doesn't have pesticides or whatever sprayed on it but they've definitely been modified because back in the day we would buy something and two three days later it'd be it'd be bad because there wasn't the spoil there would be spoilage so um, it, again, going back to it, the um, products like Plant Life, like we're not a distributed company. It's one of the reasons that we don't distribute. We, we make everything fresh and um, just in time. So when we make a product, it's sitting on the shelf probably within um, six weeks from the time that we've made it. And so, um, you know, and we keep that flow going constantly because we're the manufacturer, so we can do that. Um, we don't like selling products to a distributor to sit in a hot warehouse and, and you know, because we don't want the product destabilized in any way because yeah. we don't use preservatives and such. But that doesn't mean it's bad. It's just that... And, and the other thing on preservatives, now that I'm talking about that, is that... Um, Essential oils are a natural preservative in their own right, and so um, they do um, keep a product very stable for a minimum of a few years. Um, so, interesting. That was my next question: was how does plant life distribute all across the world without going bad? But I suppose food is a little bit different than body care. Body care usually lasts longer than food. Well, I don't think that you can ship all over the world. Um, produce unless there's been some sort of a preservative applied to it or in it or if it's fast enough yeah you ship it by plane yeah um but even at that if it's truly organic um it usually will not last so that long. 
What's something that people should know about buying natural products today? Um, I think that um, I'm a big, huge fan of buying locally at local farms um, because of the fact, especially at the food level, um, and making your own. Um, I don't. I don't think that you can ever go wrong when you make your own food. And a lot of people don't like making their own because they think it takes too long, but it actually doesn't. It you can make. You can go shopping and get great things and and have great, um, simple. You know, going back to like my date and nut and coconut thing. It was like whipped it up, and now we have the tools to do it in the kitchen. Back then, we True. didn't have the tools. We had to hand chop everything and hand everything. Um, and now there's these great tools out there that you can grind something up and have it all made, formed, and it's a great snack for kids. I mean, you can make. They have a. I was just looking. Um, the other day for this air pot that you can make your own yogurt with organic whole milk. I mean, if you, you know, it's just it's simple. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. You pour it in the thing and let it go. And, and so there's, I, I'm a big proponent of that. I think when it comes to um, taking care of your family, I think the one of the worst things is, is eating out, um, even though that's the most fun thing to do. It also, you can't control what your intake is and, and you can't control what the, the food quality. But True. I do think, uh, just to add on to what people should know about natural products today, um, I do think that people should be reading the ingredients, making sure that there's no hidden chemicals or anything in there. Um, that's one reason why I use Plant Life, just because I know that there's no hidden chemicals. I know that I'm getting a whole product. That's not gonna destroy my body but so I just have one last question for you here so are you still a hippie <laughs> <laughs> I see you've cut your hair but <laughs> <laughs> yeah I have short hair now um you know I think I I'm I feel very fortunate to have lived during that time period because um the lifestyle um uh, and maybe it was just me but I grew up at um, around the beach and um, I have a very laid-back uh, personality and things don't get me ruffled too much um, you've worked with me for a long time so you know me and I, I you know I kind of let a lot roll off my back so I feel really grateful for that because that's one thing that I think I did pick up during that time period of, of enjoy life I have a sign in my office that says love your life and I think that <clears throat> that's something that, um, you know, growing up during that time period is that, you know, it was about enjoying the moment, not worrying about the future or, or dwelling on the past or getting too caught up in all that stuff, but just enjoying the moment that you were in. Um, we all thought we were going to be dead by the time we were 30. Um, that's a little pessimistic. It, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was just, I don't know if it was because a different time period, a different time period, because we thought the world was going to come to an end. I mean, there was a lot of weird thinkings going on. I mean, I could tell you story after story about some things in Laguna Beach that happened, and of course, I did stop doing the drugs at uh, oh good <laughs> at the age of uh, about 16, 17 years old. So I got freed from that and. And uh, I'm glad I didn't go down that path because my life maybe would have turned out not so not the way that it did turn out. And uh, which um, so I was really glad that I kind of woke up and s said I don't want to do that anymore either because it's wrecking my body. Because I was really into um, you know what made my self what made my body feel good, and I always like to do things. So exercise made my body feel good. So I was a runner and. You know, and I did, I ate really well my whole life and um, always, you know, tried to eat natural and organic and all that stuff. So now I'm old <laughs> and all those years of no drugs, I mean, I don't even take aspirin and I don't go to the doctor. And so I you're eat still well, natural living. And I'm still natural living. And um, So I would say you're a hippie at heart. Yes. <laughs> 
All long-winded right. answer, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today, Patty. Um, we hope that you enjoyed this podcast. Um, if you have any comments for us or suggestions for other ideas that we can talk about, please let leave, leave us a comment and let us know. Um, and we'll see you guys next time. Oh, 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 oh,